This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And with the playing of that familiar theme song, it is time once again for the ramble. Yes, the ramble. It goes on from now until uh, midnight Eastern Daylight Time. Right now it's about uh, 10.05 Eastern Daylight Time, if you're trying to accommodate for that around the world. Uh, In the meantime, uh, we have a guest tonight. And then after that, at, uh, at about 25 minutes from right now, we're going to go over and talk to our citizens panel. And you will be able, if you're watching us on Facebook Live, to see me, to see the citizens panel and everything else. But meanwhile, as I said, we got a guest. We go out to California, ladies and gentlemen. This is the only time I ever get out to California. And we talk to our old friend, Larry Bubbles Brown. Yes, that's his real name, ladies and gentlemen. Brown is his real name. Hello, Larry. Hey, buddy. I'm just out here in uh, California, which is not sunshine, but fog, cold. Yeah, but I love that in San Francisco. You know, you could have a blazing hot day in San Francisco, and then at night the fog rolls in, and the temperature goes from, like, 85 down to 50. Zero. <laughs> you know, and, and you walk through the fog, and it's like this nice mist, and it's, it's romantic, Larry. Yeah, I used to be. I don't know. I hate it now. I, just, I can't take cold weather anymore. Oh, really? You're going to move to Florida? Sure, son. You're getting old. Yes, you, I'm going to get you, the white shoes. <laughs> you, well, to begin with, you can't move to Florida because you're not Jewish, and we won't let you. <laughs> uh, Can I convert? <laughs> I could never figure out why anybody moves to Florida. I moved to Florida. I remember when I was out of work for uh, a time at Live 105. 1990. It was the worst time of your life. Well, the worst time of my life, because where was I? In Miami. In, in Miami, which is the, you know, the only solace that I have is that with global warming, the ice caps are melting. And as they <laughs> melt, the water level rises. And maybe in another 50 years, Miami will be underwater. <laughs> That's that's my great hope and dream. <laughs> Fond memories. Yeah, I want to see all those fuckers drown. <laughs> I I used to talk about Florida. If you ever look at a map of Florida, it looks like a giant penis. Uh, and 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 what's funny is you have the uh, the, uh, the what do you call it the uh, Florida Keys, right? Those little. Islands are they just called keys or K's, I think is what the word originally was. But these uh, these keys, and they're um, uh, 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 they kind of dot the bottom of of the giant penis, looking like it's gonorrhea. <laughs> you know, so I, I that's how I think of Florida, and uh, I. Uh, uh, it's just this giant penis. And then they've got this highway that goes all the way down from the top of Florida. I can't remember. I-5, maybe. goes all the way from the top of Florida down to the tip. And it looks like a giant vein. You know, it, 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 Florida, Florida is, is a giant penis, and I hate it. And I, if I <laughs> ever have to go back there. But I can't see why Jews move there. Why? Oh, I don't like the cold in New York. Well, fuck you. Just turn on the heat. Live at home and turn on the heat. <laughs> you know, that's what it's for. And um, I, I just, but I hated Florida. I just, you know. Yeah, the, I just remember the, we were so glad when you came back. But I, I didn't know it was such a nightmare down there until you came it, back. Oh, oh, nightmare. It was do you know, have you ever, I, well, you've never lived anywhere but San Francisco, actually. Well, I mean, where were you born? You were born Ohio, Ohio, yeah. and somehow you wound up in San Francisco, and then you've been there forever, right? Been here forever. But you, but, so you've never moved to a place like I did, which was Florida, in which I was waking up every morning, opening my eyes, and the first words of my out of my mouth were, oh, fuck. I'm still in Florida. <laughs> That's how much I hated Florida. 
And, and they hated me. I really think they hated me. You know, they were the meanest audience I ever played to. Didn't you say you were fighting with the other uh, there was another oh, yeah, team yeah. on uh, the air? <laughs> you know what happens when you work at a radio station? You get along with the people who are on the station with you because you're all, you're, you all have the same purpose. You want to beat the shit out of the competition, right? And uh, so I, I wanted to beat the shit out of the competition. And, uh, uh, and all of you want to do the same thing. So you're all very supportive of each other. You plug each other. You say, Alex is on in the morning. You listen to him. I say, Rick Stewart's on in the afternoon. Boy, he's great, you know. You get along because you all have the same mission. You all have the same fight, and that's to just beat the crap out of the competition. I went to Florida, and every host hated every other host. And, and, and there was this one guy, I won't say his name right now because sometimes I forget it because it's, it's not etched in my memory because I hated him so much. Who just, if you came into town and you came on that station, he did everything to make your life a living hell and hope you failed. <laughs> you know, so, uh, in fact, I saved this guy's life. He came in one morning, he said, boy, I don't know what happened last night, but I couldn't sleep. And I, I had a pain in this arm. And I said, uh, well, if I were you, I would get to a hospital right now because you may have had a stroke or a heart attack. And he went, really? And I said, yeah. So immediately he quit his show and he went to a hospital. And sure enough, the guy had had a stroke, a, a minor one, but he had a stroke nonetheless. And they did whatever they had to do to make him better. And so on. I saved this guy's life. And he still made my life a living hell. <laughs> He still torpedoed you after that. Yes, kept doing everything. And he was like the biggest talk show host in that town. He was like a legend in that town. And he, uh, he just went after me constantly, even after I saved his fucking life. Oh. You know? Uh, it, it, so that was the atmosphere in which I had to work in in Florida. And that topped with the audience, who were just the meanest people in the world. I mean, Florida engenders being mean. I, 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 and, and everything, you know, I, I completely understand all the little, the Terry Schiavo thing, and the black kid who got killed thing. I understand all that, because that's Florida. That's the way they are down there. There are always weird crimes in Florida, <laughs> Oh, well, the only good thing that come out of Florida, if you remember, were those hot teachers who were yeah. fucking the students. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and if you saw them, they were all hot, weren't they? Yeah, they're amazing. Amazingly hot. Don't you wish you had a teacher like that? We never school? had teachers like that. Man. <laughs> we don't want to fuck our teachers. And, and, and then they, you know, they go, well, well, that's horrible what that teacher did because that's going to have a bad effect on the student for the rest of his life. What do you mean? The only danger to this kid from this beautiful, gorgeous, accommodating teacher fucking them was all the rashes on his hands from high-fiving. <laughs> you know? I mean, I went, Jesus Christ, look at that teacher. Wow, I wish I had a teacher like that who wanted to blow me. <laughs> they never they never quite understood that. But, and, and then they throw him in jail. You know? So, what the hell? I, I Quite frankly, I don't think there's a boy in the world who wouldn't like to have had a teacher do that with him. You right. Know. Would you have? If, hand, if you know, had, a male teacher does it to a girl, it's a, <laughs> they get treated a little more harshly. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, of course, but they went after all these women who were going after guys, and I'm thinking it's a little different than if it was a woman, because most guys are at that age are trying to get laid. Yeah. You know, m most women at that age aren't trying to get laid. To a woman, getting laid is something that happens eventually because one night you had too much to drink or you <laughs> you know, you know, thought you loved this guy and you wanted to keep him and whatever. But with guys, it's just they want to get laid, must get laid, must stick penis in vagina. <laughs> and um, 
I so I never saw the major crime in that. I thought she should be given an award. <laughs> Teacher of the year. Teacher of the year. No question about it in my mind. But uh, it's, I mean, if if a teacher had wanted to fuck you at that age, say you were fifteen, all right? Yeah. Are you there? Are you up for that? Of course, but I, I think at fifteen, I, you wouldn't believe what was happening. It'd be like a dream. I mean, I can see where you're going to say there's a damage to a woman. There's a difference, you know. There's a difference between men and women sexually, and it's not what a lot of people would think. It's what it is is penetration penetration is the psychological thing that informs every opinion you have in that area <laughs> women women protect themselves because they they're going to be penetrated guys don't get penetrated i mean some guys do but you know they're not of the same sexual proclivity that we are but like a stabbing but there's a complete difference between penetration and penetrating. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. And so, therefore, women are more protective of themselves. Women can get raped much easier than guys. And uh, it's, it, it is a terrible thing when a teacher forces themselves on a, on a, on a woman. But when you get with these women, who, and, and every one of them were gorgeous. You were going, they could have gotten any guy over the age of 18 they wanted. And they're tr going for these high schoolers. You go, wow, <laughs> you know. And and you and I have to ask, what's the damage? There's no penetration there, you know. But, no. but I just wonder, did did this ever happen like forty years ago? Did it ever happen forty years ago? No, like yeah, yeah. it just seemed like some new phenomenon. That... Well, it, it it didn't happen forty years ago. I think it probably happened. I just don't think it was ever reported. You know, a lot of things happened we didn't hear about then. But. Yeah. Uh, but I, I just don't think they got reported. That would be my, my take on it. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. Um, uh, but uh, I, well, when I was going to high school, uh, there was a drama teacher. Uh, and we would, uh, I, I, I don't think he's still alive, so I could probably say his name. His name is Mr. Marr. I remember his name. It was Bill Marr. No, it was Mr. Marr. <laughs> and, and on a Saturday night, we'd go to the Tamil Pius Theater to go see a movie, and on, in the back row with some student was Mr. Marr making out with them. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's how open it was, okay? Wow. I mean, it was just, a, it, it was, you didn't, you didn't question it, you know? It was just something that happened. But today, of course, everything is wrong, you know? You can't be right. Like, for instance, Durr says that he meets up with a lot of hostile audiences because he's a political comic. Now, my question to you was, do you ever meet up with hostile audiences? Just because <laughs> you say something, oh, that's not right, you can't say that. Well, the, uh, the the PC thing is, is yeah, there's go always you're all, you're always going to piss somebody off. It seems these days, every everything's been politicized. So, yeah, you have to be so careful about what you say. Wow, yeah. So, so yeah, they're taking a lot of the fun out of the uh, out of living. I'd say it, it 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 is taking a lot of fun out of living. It does. It's, uh, no someone pointed out it's a uh, the PC movement is actually. Almost, it's almost like puritanical. There's very grim face, almost religious zealot like persecution of people because they say the wrong thing and what well, they perceive to be the wrong well, thing. Well, now here is a question. See, I mean, in the name of comedy, you know, comedy should be given a wide berth. You're kind of the court jester. And, and, and your job, is, in many cases, to comment on the world around you. And there shouldn't be any such thing as being unpolitical PC. Like, for instance, I don't like Kathy Griffin. All right? She's a cunt. All right? I don't know if you've ever worked with her, but she's an unpleasant human being. That's what I've heard. Yeah. Uh, 
But I got to defend her. That thing she did with the bloodied head of Donald Trump as an art piece or whatever. Hey, she's Kathy Griffin. She's a comic. She's a, she should be allowed to do this without people coming down on her and trying to ruin her career. Uh, I just don't think there's a place for that because the job of the comic is to do stuff which riles up the public, that speaks out against things. Or, you know, you, it's not like you're trying to be a, a, a world changer, but you're a commentator. You know? Now, yes, I'm for uh, I'm for total freedom of speech and expression. So uh, if you don't like it, don't go. It, 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 absolutely. But yet, you know, everybody goes, oh, that's politically incorrect. Well, fuck you, it's politically incorrect. You know, so what? Uh, and and so, I mean, I give everybody that wide berth, even, even Kathy Griffin. And how many comedians' lives are being ruined lately or, or because they make the, they say the wrong thing on stage? One wrong thing, and uh, I guess you don't, you don't want to get near a college these days, these People have been so brainwashed, but yeah. like they said, Seinfeld said he can't play a college. Now, how could you find Seinfeld he, offensive? He doesn't want to play colleges. He says no. they're the worst places to play now. Right. Um, and, and I can understand why. But, I mean, it's just amazing, just amazing. People are, uh, are uh, just so sensitive. Uh, Fun is dead. You know, who, who was it? Michael Richards. You remember the thing that happened with Michael Richards? Yeah. Where he, you know, he just kind of went wrong on stage. It was just he, he didn't, he thought he was being funny, but he wasn't being funny. And it had to use, it had to do with the word, I think it had to do with the N word. Yeah. Which I hate it when we say the N word because everybody knows what the word is. <laughs> you know, it's like when we say the F word on radio. Oh, oh, we can't say the F word. Oh, well, every, everybody, let me just quietly sit here and everybody say the F word at the same time as you're listening to me. And everybody knows the words fuck. But anyway, they say the N word. So he, he, said, he said it and it, 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 it he, I guess he, he doesn't have a career anymore because of that. You don't see him much, no. You know, and, and I don't know Michael Richards personally, but he may not be a racist in the traditional sense, but he he was, you know, that was it. You know, and no. he, he's a comedian on stage trying to survive. And I implore people, watch this show. I'm dying up here on Showtime because you get a good idea of what that's all about. You know, the person who goes on stage and is just dying. And when you're dying in front of, I don't know, what, 50 people or something, you're on stage, you're dying alone. It's not comfortable. So if, if somebody goes crazy trying to get a laugh by what they're saying because of their frustration that the audience isn't laughing, don't hold it against them. They're just trying to survive up there. Yeah. Like, have you ever, I, I, I can't imagine it because I find you one of the funniest human beings in the world, but have you ever gone on stage and nobody laughs? No, well, all the time. <laughs> That's your act. No, it's happened a lot. It's, it's also, it, can, uh, it depends on the, sometimes gigs are more important than other gigs, and when you bomb at a big one, that's, uh, that's pretty intense. It, yeah, it, it gets pretty intense. All right, oh, I'll, I'll go on. I, I had to go back to, uh, I was supposed to do Letterman in 85, and I flew back. They were calling me. I'd, I'd done a set out here, and they really liked me. We just had to see you one more time. So I went back to New York, Catch a Rising Star, and I bombed. Steve Pearl was there. He, I bombed so bad. I mean, literally not one laugh. And uh, it kept me from getting the show for almost two years after that. But I finally did get it, but... That was like one of the worst bombs I've ever had, where you're just, you're just saying all the stuff that has killed for the past year and just getting virtually nothing. Total silence. I'm, I'm trying to remember the comedian that, uh, that, uh, that Feldman was working for. He, before he worked for Marr, he worked for the guy who had the show on HBO. Uh, Dennis Miller. Donut Dennis Miller. And he said he was in, uh, he was in Vegas with, with Miller. And uh, he had to go up at one of the clubs, 
And so Miller went along with him. And uh, Feldman went up and he did his act. And it was one of the nights that it didn't work. You know, you can have this sure material that works everywhere else. All of a sudden you go before a certain audience or it's just how you feel that night or whatever. And you're completely and it's completely off and you have a terrible set. And on the way back to the hotel in the cab, he asked Dennis, well, what would you think, Dennis? He said it was like watching my best friend in a porno film. I remember that. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, um, I, uh, uh, you know, I always made it a practice, for instance. I would go to clubs, but if, like, you were on stage, I wouldn't watch you. Uh, but once every maybe six months, and I made a, 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 a vow to do that, because if I see you every night, I don't get an idea of how much you've changed, how much you've improved. But if I see your act once every six months, then I'm going to get an idea of that. Yeah. And so I would, uh, I would always, you know, be in another room. I'd be in the back room snorting some coke or something with the club owner, <laughs> you know. And, and, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't go out and actually watch the act. The same was true with like Slayton or anybody else, because I knew your act so well that um, I, I wanted to be able to back off from it and then look at it occasionally, and and that's the best way to judge a comic. Uh, you don't go see them every night. You know, the, the improvement improvement is minuscule night by night. How, how do you feel you are today compared to the way you were, oh, back when I hired you for my comedy shows? Do you think you're better now than you were then? Uh, most of the comics I know think they're better today, the older comics, but I think I think I was better then. I think I was a little more on top of it, and uh, my mind was quicker. But did you... I do okay, I do okay now, but I just think... Uh, some guys do age well and get better, but I thought I was probably better 20, 20 years ago. Why? I just like more. I could think clearer. Sometimes I just uh, draw a blank, you know. You, you Mine's not real. And I don't I don't perform as much. as I, I used to do like 300 sets a year. Now I do like 100, so I'm not as sharp as I was. Well, I, I feel today that I suck. <laughs> well, that's off how and how I feel. So. But I, I think. But we're bru- we're unlike most people. We're brutally self honest. I think so. Oh, we always are. Yeah, we are. Yeah. And 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 self. I think self critical is the term you're yeah. looking for. Uh, but that can be a good thing, actually. Well, I mean, certainly, you know, there are comics who think they're great. You and think you're great all the time, and it's all wonderful. You're probably not. It, 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 chances are, you aren't. You know, right. You're Perry Kurtz, <laughs> who is a legend in in in, is in comedy. He is a, he is a legend in comedy as being maybe the worst act ever. <laughs> I saw him once in Florida. When I was in Florida, I went by, and I saw Perry Kurtz at a club. And you know what he did for his act? He had been on Love Connection, and he ran the tape. The whole tape of him on Love Connection. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, yeah. And that was his act. You know, uh, and, uh, and 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 Perry was just. I, I I think everybody considered him probably the worst comedian they ever knew. <laughs> but a lovable guy. Was he? He was okay. He yeah. was okay. Yeah. I mean, I I wasn't that keen on him. Yeah, you know, I didn't want to hang with him. Let me put it that way. Because he would, around. because he would show you tapes of him on Love Connection. Yeah, you know? and then he was, show, yeah, it was part of the act, and yeah, but I mean, it, it wasn't particularly funny, you know. And when I show up at a comedy club, I'm not there to see a TV tape, you know. I'm there to see the comedian doing comedy. I uh, think he had Chuck Woolery laughing. Maybe that was. Is that it? Yeah. Is he still working, Perry Kurtz? Is he alive? He's, he's in L.A. Yeah, he's still working. He still goes up and tries. I, huh? I see him on Facebook. I don't know what what his act's like now, but uh, wow, he's still wow. around. You know, who I had here in New York a couple of weeks ago. We went out and had dinner, so it was Mark Pitta. 
Oh, yeah. He told me about that. He said I had a great time. Yeah. I, yeah. We had a really nice time. Good seeing him after all these years. And, yes, and you know, commiserating with him on his divorce, which divorce, has been... Divorce, yeah, that sounded ugly. It, well, they're all ugly. Have you ever heard anybody say, I went through a great divorce? <laughs> you know? It's not fun. Hey, listen, we've gone through another 25 sterling minutes with you and well, me. Well, I'm proud just, of you. You made it. You were uh, you were afraid you're going to stumble I, I, through. Because you, I got no sleep last night, but I'm fine because you bring me to life, Larry. You came back like a fighter off the ropes. You're, you're kind of my, uh, what do we call it? You're my Heimlich maneuver. <laughs> Sometimes on the propo, propo, whatever they call it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Larry. Yeah. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, hello everybody. How are you? It's Alex. Uh, thanks to Larry for having joined us uh, this evening. And uh, he'll be with us again next week. I promise you. I promise you. Uh, let me see here. Let me get everybody going here. Let me turn on the uh, Skype so that we can uh, that we can do this uh, this show and get it done with. Okay. Hope you had a nice a day off uh, or a couple of days off. Uh, I would say for a lot of you it was a, uh, 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 quite a few days off to tell you the damn truth uh, because uh, uh, you probably took my day off as well. Let me see here. For those of you watching me on uh, on 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 the television on the uh, uh, Facebook Live. Uh, if I'm not looking directly at you, it's because I have so many other things to take care of here. But our Skype lines are open for anybody who wants to call the program. What did we do this weekend? We didn't do much of anything, to tell you the damn truth. Uh, we just uh, uh, we went to a movie, went and saw Baby Driver, which I liked a lot. It's a good film, good film. Michael Snyder recommended it, and then I, everything I read about it was good, and... Uh, on the CBS Sunday morning thing, the guy who does the reviews on that show said he liked it. So you know, whatever. Uh, hey, here's 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 Mike. He's the first up to call. Let's see here, Mike, you there? Yeah, I'm here. There we go. There he is. Now don't let Mike be the only one to call. Otherwise, this show's in trouble. Hey, Alex. You know I am going to a, a birthday party tomorrow to a dear dear friend of mine. Mm -hmm. who's going to be 96 years old, mm -hmm. a chef. He started cooking back in 1938. Yeah. Re retired back in 1969. Uh, yeah. When he retired from the business. And he's, he was, was married to his wife for 70 years, who passed away. Who's a lovely lady, Marie. Yeah. So we're all getting together and celebrating his uh, 96th birthday. He's a little short, little tan cook from Naples. He was born in Naples, came to the United States <clears throat> in '22 as a kid. I'm sure he, I'm sure he's gotten tinier as he's gotten older. Oh, he got meaner. <laughs> That's wow. why we loved him so much. Yeah, he hey. used to carry a little spoon with him. He still has the original spoon that his uncle gave him back in 1938 to test sauce. He says, you dip your your spoon in the sauce. You know, none of, the, none of this is making a lot of sense, Mike. Well, his life has been, he has a good life. Yeah, the yeah. man has lived this long. Let me say hello to Jason here who has just joined us. Jason probably is joining us tonight because we're not going to be on Friday, and every other Friday is when he calls, right? No, it's because my wife's out of town. Oh, she's out of town. Oh, then you could probably call. Is she out of town tomorrow night, too? Yeah. Oh, you'd call tomorrow night as well. And so I'm giving it a try to see how it goes tonight because I got to be up at six o'clock in the morning. So somebody called us up on uh, on on the phone, and that I bet is Tim, right, Tim, or who is it on the phone? No, it's actually it's Steve from Steve. New Jersey. Steve from New Jersey. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, and we just been joined by Phil Meyer. Hello, Mr. Meyer. Hey, hey Phil. How you doing? And by the way, Mike, I ordered a meal from that chef in 1938, and I still haven't gotten it. Well, you can complain to him. He worked at Ali Odell's uh, 1938. He worked there with his uncle. Alex, 
you, you, you got to let me tell you a, a story about my trip to New York City in the, this past week, but um, we'll, we'll save it because I don't want to interrupt the conversation. But, yeah. oh, my God. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Uh, what you, what'd you do? Tear up the taxi drivers? We don't want him. No. He, we what I did. Thank was you so I much, visited. Mike. <laughs> he what, wasn't going to tell us. He what, wasn't. What, go- what I did. Oh, well. Go ahead. Go, 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 go on. Talk. It's not my show. Go ahead. What, what I did was I I went. I hearken back to the old days of radio, which I'm even too young to to really have appreciated, but I went Who's and snoring? visited Who's everything snoring? on old Radio Row on 6th Avenue in New York. On 6th Avenue? And I spoke with how, the security how, how, people. How, how, how was that Radio Row? <laughs> it was the coolest thing, one of the coolest things no, I, I that ever wasn't, did. No, that wasn't but that wasn't Radio Row. Well, it was it was NBC down on you know on Thirty yeah, Rock. But NBC was there back in the thirties, but yeah, but C- CBS wasn't. Uh, at, no, CBS was uh, they, that was the old Mercury Theater, Forty Five Madison. If, if, if Forty if, Forty Five Madison, no, uh, four, 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 four fifty, eight five. Four, four eight five Madison, Madison where Avenue. Mad Magazine was. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, you're boring the shit out of us, Steve. It feels like I'm sorry. I uh, but I had so much fun. Well, good. I, 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 All right. I had to go to these places that yeah, but you that, didn't go to any, you, you didn't go to any places. You know, you didn't I go did. to four 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 eighty five Madison Avenue. You know, you didn't go to Mercury Theater. What was for War of the Worlds happened? Steve, you're blind, right? <laughs> What's that? You're legally blind, right? Yeah, I am. Okay, how do you know you were in the right place? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, because I asked the security people if I'm at the right address. <laughs> uh, they were just being kind. <laughs> Maybe they were, but I'll tell you. And then I went, I went to Black Rock. And I w- and then I went to. Yeah, but BlackRock, BlackRock didn't become CBS till um, uh, maybe like late 60s. late fifties, early sixties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the excellence in broadcasting that came out of that. Bill the only thing I remember was, about about BlackRock was I was working right across the street, which was ABC. That's right. Uh, and I went in there, and I told uh, these the, the security people it hasn't are so been, nice. It hasn't been ABC for like 30 years. <laughs> these, these people are so cool, these security people. I didn't get up to where I wanted to go. I wanted to go to 8, because 8 was your floor at ABC. So I couldn't. I couldn't. I, I didn't have an appointment, so I couldn't. Do it, what floor did you say was my floor? Number eight. Yeah, number eight. You're right. You're yeah. Right. What was on the seventh floor? Yeah. What was on the seventh floor? There's, there's. I don't know what was on seven, and I know nine. The business were offices. The things. business offices for Channel Seven. Oh wow, that's so cool! I didn't know that. Yes. <laughs> and, and you know what, what was really cool oh was God, this at, is, uh, this at Black is Rock uh, on 16. I'll tell you what was really where... cool was the day a guy jumped out of Black Rock and landed on the steps right in front of CBS, right in, fr- in back of a friend of mine who heard this enormous, heard this enormous splat and turned around and will never forget that day for the rest of his life. <laughs> Oh, man. I never heard that. Okay. <laughs> but I'll tell uh, you. Okay. Well, so far, you've ru- so far you've ruined our show, okay? Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. But I had fun, and I visited Radio Row, and I know the 30 people did. were really cool. Okay. Fine. Good. Okay. That wasn't Radio Row. <laughs> if you want to believe that was Radio oh, Row. Radio Row was uh, up on 116th Street now. Uh, no, Radio Row, basically, a lot, of, no. a lot of the stuff was on Madison Avenue. It was spread all over town, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah. Even yeah. in the old days, WMCA started in the McAlpin Hotel, you know. Yes. My mom used to work, my mother. When, when are you, you like going to shut up school. and let other people talk? I'm sorry. You're saying he's Boy, worse this, than me? This is the first time I've wanted to hear from Phil. Yes, Jason. <laughs> hey, so did you decide that oh you're going God, to Fire Island? Hey, 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 can you shut no. up for a minute here, Steve? Thank you. Did you, did well, you decide are you going to Fire Island or are you just taking I, it a day off? I'm going to, I'm going to Fire Island. Oh, I, don't, I don't... Me too. Uh, who? Yeah. <laughs> he's going to follow you. <laughs> are you going to wear a Speedo? Oh, boy. Alex, are you going to wear a Speedo? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, I like you. I don't care. I don't care what your politics are. I want to hear you. What do you want to say, Phil? You know, while I wasn't <laughs> looking, somehow uh, we, we've we been joined by uh, uh, Tony. I, I don't know how you got on because I did. Did I click you? Hey, on? Tony. How you doing? Yeah, I think he did. Hey. Are you are you drunk, Steve? Oh, you're talking about me. I'm uh, I'm 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 kind of high. I, I actually. Uh, yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. It kind of kinda seems like it. I am, and uh, but I'm not drunk though. Sure. Uh, sure, you're not. No, I, no. But anyway, go ahead, go ahead, Tony. Yeah. Go ahead, Phil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I went to Ruth Chris tonight on the way home. No. Oh, the, why uh, do you go to that? <laughs> why do you go to that shitty you didn't place? Say that. Oh, they got a new thing on the menu, spicy shrimp. Ooh, it's good. But you went to a steakhouse and you bought shrimp. Yeah, yeah I had a couple of glasses of wine mm-hmm. and uh, uh, chicken sandwich and some spicy shrimp. Well, I forego my, went, forewent my diet today. Yeah. And I had some ravioli that oh, I bought at cool. Italy. Oh, actually, I don't think I went over, like, I think at this point I can take in about 150 carbs a day and not gain weight, but... I only took in about maybe 60 or so with the ravioli, but I went to Italy and got it and some little raviolis and a couple of big raviolis, just about a pound of ravioli, and uh, brought it home. And uh, we had a very nice uh, dinner tonight. So, and, uh, and what is that noise? I'm afraid to ask what's going on. It, it, it's who, the stone guy. Anyway, uh, and, <laughs> and, and what I did, here's what I had to do. Here's what I did. I went. Are you gonna stop making noise there, uh, Steve? Steve, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm rinsing out beer bottles. What? <laughs> I'm rinsing out beer bottles. Well, like wait, well, will you pay sweet. attention to the show rather than rinse out beer okay, bottles? Okay, I, I, yes, I will pay attention. Go ahead. And you know, you don't have to rinse them out to get the deposit back. Anyway. <laughs> no, go ahead. Oh, you're just minutes away from being hung up on. Anyway, uh, where where was I? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. So I went that because I was down at Home Depot on 23rd Street because I decided to get myself a 50-foot extension cord so that I could run it from the bedroom to the socket I know is on another circuit in the, in the dining room. And then I tacked it all down so it it looks okay. It's only going to be there till summer's over with, and then I'll roll it up. But now I can turn on the microwave and the air conditioner at the same time and not All blow, the not oh, blow the fuse like, like I did last week. What's America coming to? Do you know something? But, uh, my, so mother that, put the, my, my mother couldn't put on her air conditioner upstairs in the microwave at the same time. She would blow a fuse. Any, 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 if you've got an air conditioner and you turn yeah. on the microwave and it's on the same circuit, you're going to blow yeah. the circuit. Yeah, she does it all the time. And I keep, I keep running down and says, I forgot. I said, Mom, how can you forget? Yeah, well, that's... She heats her coffee. So, I, so I moved this, literally, I an extend, 50-foot extension cord, double uh-huh. duty, you know, big, fat extension cord, all the way to a, a cir- uh, you know place where I knew. Every time the circuit's ever blown, that light is still on. So I... Oh, really? Yeah, so I know sure. that. I know it's okay. That's so, the circuit that's that, running off your neighbor's... <laughs> no, 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 no! I didn't do that. No, no, it's off my electricity. But now, and, I, and just for the fun of it, I turned on, I turned it on, and then I turned on my uh, my electricity, and uh, I turned on the air conditioner, 
and the microwave at the same time, and nothing happened. So. And if it blew 10 minutes before the show, you would have had to run down to the basement and flip the switch. Well, I don't think it's going to blow anymore. I think, I think what the problem was, I have an air conditioner here yeah. in the studio, and I have an air conditioner in the bedroom. And most of the time, on a hot night, they'd both be on. I didn't realize that, but they're all on the same circuit. If this wasn't on, probably that wouldn't, from just the coffee machine, that other one wouldn't have made it blow. Okay? But because I had this one going at the same time to cool, cool the room down. But now I'm fine. You know, I'm cool. Life's good. That's what's nice about being in a house with central air. Huh? That's what's nice about being in a house having central air. Well, if you have if you have central air in a house, a lot of old houses don't have central air. They the and it's stuff. low humidity too, which is nice tonight. It's I I've got I have all my windows and doors open. It's really nice. Yeah, yeah. By the way, well, you said you you said you were stoned. What drug are you doing? Just beer. Just beer. That's not a drug. Sure. No, I agree with you. <laughs> it's worse than weed. It's worse than weed. No, no, yeah. you, no, I, I, you know, I'm the I'm the only person oh, in the world I that I know questions. of that tried acid and never even took a toke of marijuana ever. Oh, okay. Well, Not just ever. can can you shut up for about ten minutes? <laughs> yes. Maybe more. The show. Maybe <laughs> more. What? <laughs> And I'm going to start the show now. Okay. <laughs> so hey, uh, let, let me start. Let me let me start the show. Yeah. Okay. What? And I'm going to start. The yeah. Show. There we go. <laughs> All right. To turn that uh, yeah. My air conditioner at the store died. Really? Uh, yeah. We had the air conditioner guy in. We waited four or five days for this guy to show up. Yeah. Uh, you know, and of course it went out on a day that we had 104 degree weather. And uh, so I've got fans in the showroom. We open the door, but it's still not enough. It's damn hot. Yeah, that's and, how I am at work every day, Phil. So. Yeah. So the guy <laughs> changed the filter. He cleaned the things. He flushed it out, and then he said, "You need a new one." <laughs> so, so I, it's the thing that goes on the roof, and I think they're about six grand. And I'm not looking forward to that. But six. you know, summer, I got to do something. Yeah, that's well, not so too bad. You, so you've got I, I to do my furnace and central air. Over this winter, it cost me like eight grand. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, you. Mine was nine. R really? I just bought a new house, and saved all that. Yeah, well, <laughs> if mine goes, it's two hundred and fifty bucks. Yeah, I just say my air conditioner is like two hundred bucks. It's done. Yeah, it's done. <laughs> Stop, Throw it in, stick it in the wall, and hope it doesn't <laughs> fall out the window. You know, well, I, I got a cool five thousand feet of showroom with a thirteen foot ceiling. Yeah. So uh, it's uh, it's uh, and and the air conditioner that I had and, was and, seventy and, years and old. And how much does it cost you a month? Yeah, uh, what's your electricity bill? Eight hundred. I was just going to say eight hundred. Yeah. My my bill this month was high. Or I ran my air conditioner a lot, and my bill was like one hundred and twenty dollars. Well, yeah. how, wait a minute. How do you get away with that? Have you, got, is, have you got it plugged into somebody else's house? Yeah, I have central air. Central. We're more efficient now. That's pretty good. Yeah. Money are. But my whole central air unit probably uses less electricity than your little window unit. Are you getting central air in your new place, uh, Rob? Yeah, they all come with it. It's not even an option. Yeah. But I wonder how much it's going to cost. I mean, it'll, you know, it, it, probably air conditioning uses up more electricity than anything else. No, nah, that's not true. I, I, yeah. I th My electric bill, I've been running central air in a big... In my last house, I don't think it cost me in the summer just about what you said, 120 a month. Mm -hmm. That's a lot, though. Yeah, air conditioning does it costs a lot of money. Yeah, the I don't apartment think that's a lot to have the entire house cool. 50 or 60, yeah, but the and I'm saying my total electric bill was 120. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Well, I hate you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. They make them so energy efficient today. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna get they the. Do. Yeah. When are you going to get it fixed, though? Because you must be sweating your petunias off on that. This point. week. You know, I just need them to call me back with uh, with a proposal. Proposal? Well, will you marry me? <laughs> <laughs> How much? How are you going to get the customers to come in and sweat with probably, Alex? Did, Did you, you check your Costco, too? Uh, no, I need a thing that goes on the roof. Yeah, uh, still, because uh, uh, I think they deal with Linux. Linux might make rooftop units. Really? For commercial? Yeah, there's you. Know, I think 
I think they do. And I think you gotta get a permit, don't you, Phil? I don't know, know what yeah. the hell. You always have to get a permit. You see, guys, problem. But, uh, oh, hey, you know, Alex, that guy Perry Kurtz, you yelled at me because of him. What? I yelled at you because of Perry Kurtz. This was a comedian we were talking about with Bubbles, oh, right. who may be the worst comic alive. Right. Perry Kurtz always wanted to get on your show. Yes. And uh, after, uh, you know, I, I, I helped you out and I did uh, I, I did your I was your producer for a couple of weeks while you were going to go on vacation and you wanted to train me and then have me there while you were on vacation with Susan. And then when you came back, yeah, I, cause I didn't want you to be a producer while I was around. No, well, I was, uh, you know, because you had to train me. But uh, what what ended up happening is after that stint. You wouldn't let Perry Kurtz on your show. And I went to the Cobbs Club or one of those, I think the one on Chestnut Street or something. I, I, went to, I went into this club and he was at the door. And he says, oh, can you get me on Alex's show? Can you get me on Alex's show? And I don't like to say no to people. I, I use the same, uh, the same little excuse, which is, uh, uh, you know, I understand. Uh, let me see what I can do. So he, he goes, instead of let me see what I can do, he calls you up and says, Phil says I can get on. <laughs> and you yelled oh. at me. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, I, 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 just Perry Kurtz wasn't funny. I didn't want him on my show. Nah, he was a little prick, and you know, he was he kind of like a little uh, like a venomous snake. He just kept coming at you. you know? Yeah, yeah, he was. He uh, must be a bad comedian because I never even heard of him. <laughs> well, thank you very much. We've never heard of you, but anyway, um, oh man, and my my so, my, yeah, you yelled at me, and you said. You can't tell people when they're going to get on the show. I said, I didn't tell them to get on the show. What did you tell them? I told them I'll see what I can do, which is nothing. You probably said you'd go on. <laughs> I'm to tell them. Who's this? He's coming on. I, I have to put a pillow behind me. I have a problem with my my feet have been so numb lately. Uh, and I think it's, it's definitely, uh, it's like sciatica. And I had this happen about a That's year, about circuit, two years ago, where, where it was terrible. And uh, then it cleared itself up. And that's what I'm told happens with it. It comes and it goes and it comes and it goes. So right now I'm having a terrible bout with it. Uh, yeah, well, go to the gym. The chiropractor will help it go. Huh? The, the chiropractor will help it go. Um, <laughs> yeah, if I went to a chiropractor. Anyway... So uh, what's what's new? What's happening? What's what's in the news? Anything uh, that we should know about? Trump's going to Poland, my mom said. You know, he's in yeah, Poland. Trump's Trump's in Poland. Yeah, he's going to get yeah. a royal uh, Polish uh, greeting. I think that's uh, what they do is this, but you know. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Phil. No, no, you know, it's like I, this until yeah, to you. Mr. What what is what is that, Tony? That's a, I will be uh, the greatest president. God ever created. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is oh, it? You know, I, I, I never. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Was that a pen? Is that a pen? Yeah. Yeah. Pens, isn't it? It's, it's a, a pen. 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 Yeah. yeah. Push no, the head again. Push the head again. I will build a great, great wall <laughs> on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. Wait a minute. It says, uh, keep pushing it. It says different things every time. I don't wear it to pay. It's my hair. I swear. <laughs> Where'd you get that? I just sold an apartment for $15 million to somebody from China. Our leaders are stupid. Our politicians are stupid. Wow. It's... We will have so much winning if I get elected that you may get bored with winning. I'm still waiting to win. <laughs> I think I am a nice person. People that know me like me. <laughs> I mean, somebody talks about it, so people that know me are like Yeah, me. Now, let me ask you a question. Where'd you get that? The, uh, I was out shopping with my sister out on the uh, outlets on Long Island, so we we're in one of these stores, and it had like a throwback store where they had like old video game candies and like doodads. Yeah. And I saw this, I said, I gotta buy this. I said, <laughs> it was twenty dollars, so I was kind of worth it. About it, it, it was worth it. every penny. Save it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Save I figured it. it's a it's a gimmick, so I bought it. Wow. Yeah, Tony, you know, uh, oh, I, 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 I never, never thought I could hate, uh, and I use that word carefully. Uh, I wish you were uh, every, every day I hear things about Trump in the news, 
I never, I can't, I can't hey, believe hey, 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 it hey. happened. Uh, can I say something, Stephen? Steve? Yeah. Uh, I, there's one thing I hate in this world, and I have a great a prejudice against, and that's people who are drunk. Oh, boy. I find them obnoxious. I find them well, overbearing. I'm, I'm a pretty good drunk. And w no, you're not. <laughs> and when... when no, I'm sorry. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. And when you call a program like this, you're like yeah. the drunk person... When you're trying to drive, who's in the passenger seat and starts tugging on the wheel. And I have a show to do here, and you're a little too drunk to be on it. Okay, look, I'll let you go. And yeah. I really appreciate that you let me on. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Alex. Goodbye, Steve. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Thank you very much. Okay. Anybody else want to take his spot? <laughs> Oh boy! Uh, no, I'm not drunk. No, uh, yeah, it, <laughs> God, but I, I wish can't you. Be. <laughs> I, I I wish you were. Then I could hang up on you. No, I really I hate. <laughs> I I detest drunks. There's just something about people who are drunk and the way, way in which they act that's annoying. Well, that's another thing. Am, you I, am I wrong, Jason? Trump. I mean, you do some drinking in your time, right? Yeah, and I've been on your show pretty hammered before, too, but I guess I just act differently. Yeah, you don't, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are people who can be drunk and hold it and do a nice job and, you know, participate in the program. But um, but now, oops, oh, God, my knee. The other thing is, last night I slept all wrong, and now my knee's all fucked up again. <laughs> oh, jeez. Huh? How'd you, how'd you do that? I have a torn meniscus. I tore my meniscus a while back, and I guess I tore it again last night while I was sleeping. And, and did you sleep with I, a pillow between your knees? I, I did for a while, and then later on I didn't. And I, I, oh, it was just, it was just horrible, just it, all day. And that's why another reason I asked, "Am I going out to Fire Island?" Yes, I am, but I'm probably not going to be able to walk on the beach or anything like that because this leg is all fucked. So yes, you're not going to be on Friday, correct? I'm not going to be on Friday. Uh, uh, I will have uh, 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 Jack's Jack. going to do it. Jack's going to do it. If you had your studio, I'd let you do it. But you don't We're have a, there. you don't have a studio. Well, yeah, but first the house has to be built. <laughs> well, it's it, the frame is up now finally. Oh, oh really? Yeah, it's all framed out. Mm -hmm. We were in it yesterday. We walked around. Not yesterday, before yesterday, uh -huh. Monday. We walked around on the first floor. We walked up the stairs mm -hmm. to the second floor, and there wasn't any. <laughs> hey, you know, what you need is Alex's 50-foot extension cord. You could set the studio up now. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Plug it into a neighbor's yard. Yeah. 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 But uh, yeah. Uh, so how much longer till it's finished? I guess a while. Well, still till we won't be moving in until probably October 1st. Okay. But. That's not bad. You know, it's just because you bought it from somebody who builds these goddamn things, you know, one after the other after the other. There's no, like, a couple of months of stalling, and this can't be no. done, and this hasn't been done, you know. I mean, we, we went there Friday night. We left Saturday to go visit my brother out on Long Island. We left Friday night. We went out to see the house. We always go on Friday night. There were, nothing was done besides the foundation. <clears throat> we came back Monday night, and the first floor was up. Wow. And then the uh, my project manager sent me pictures yeah. this bad. morning. A day later, the whole second floor is up. The roof, everything is up. Where they go through it fast. Wow. Like, hey, you know why I don't want a second floor in my store? Why? I don't want any overhead. Oh. <laughs> that bottom. <laughs> bad. Yeah, they're, they're building like three houses at the end of my street. And uh, one, it seems like they've been working on forever. It looks like it's finished. And then uh, two, they're like identical houses. It's like they built one first. They framed it all out. They wrapped it in the, the weather seal and then put a roof on it. And then they started building the one next door. And it seemed like it, it didn't make any sense. It seemed like you'd build both of them right at the same time so you could have, you know, the same crews, you know, the roofers, the framers, you know, the people doing the, yeah. you know, work rate right simultaneously, not basically almost finishing the framing, the roughing of one house, and then you start on the next one. Why does anybody ever buy a house in Detroit when you can get a house for a dollar, put it on a trailer, you move it over to a lot, 
and and you and you set it up on a foundation. Why 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 would people buy and build? Yeah, it's not Detroit. But. By the way, the, here here's <laughs> the, here's the latest news for y'all. Uh, Representative Steve Sc uh, Scalise, is that how his name is pronounced? Yeah, the guy who got back. shot. He's been readmitted to the hospital. Uh, to intensive care due to an infect infection concerns three weeks after being shot. So, you know why he just doesn't want to talk to any GOP uh, 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 constituents uh, in in his home district, right? Because they're going to be on him, yeah, uh, over health care, and you know. So he, he says, "Well, look what kind of health care I'm getting." Yeah, exactly, exactly. But anyway, so you know, he's got an infection. So, phew, who knows? You know. Uh, but he's just a senator. <laughs> you know. yeah. He's been there too long. By the way, uh, if you want to read any updates on my uh, on my wife, go to as uh, timegoesby.net. dot time goes dot net. Your ex wife. My ex wife. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Your yeah. girlfriend would make sure she's saying that clearly. Huh? She's not your wife. She's, she's your not your wife. wife. I'm your wife. Damn it. Um. But she uh, she's at home recuperating from the operation. You know, the prognosis is still iffy, all right? Because pancreatic cancer is a bear. Uh, but they, uh, they said they got it all. They said there was no, it had not left the margins, I guess, of the pancreas, whatever that means. And then they checked some, uh, 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 what do you call it, some lymph nodes. And two of them had the cancer in them. So, you know, they're going to put her through chemotherapy. You know, I, I don't know, you know. Uh, and, I, uh, and so if you want to read about this, uh, she's writing very candidly and very well about it. Just go to timegoesby.net. But I started to think about it. You know, if I got something like that, I don't know how far I'd want to go to save myself. You know, do you want to spend the last years of your life just being hacked up, you know, like a carp and getting chemotherapy and being nauseous all the time and that kind of thing? I mean, how much do you cling to this planet? I don't know. That's a good question. You know, I don't know. I don't know if I want to go through it all. It depends I mean, on how old you are, I think. Yeah, well, I mean, she's 76 now, you know. Uh, and but I mean, do you want to go through the chemotherapy? Do you want to do all that on the ten percent chance that you'll live upwards to ten years? When you know tomorrow you could go out on the street and get run over by a bus, you know? It I I just don't know. I don't know what I would do if I were in her situation. Uh, I I would be scared shitless. To tell you the damn truth, you know. Uh, you want you want time to settle up, uh, to say your goodbyes, and and uh, you know, close your affairs, and you know if you could have six months or a year to do those things, it wouldn't be bad. You know, I, if you know that you're I terminal. guess you know uh, there is an advantage to terminal diseases, in that you know it's not like a stroke where you go and maybe you had an argument with your wife that morning and you never got to resolve it. You know, whereas if you're dying of a terminal disease, you can go out and say goodbye to everybody. I always love the stories about Audrey Hepburn did it and Ingrid Bergman did it. They went back. Uh, she uh, Hepburn, I think, went back to wherever she was from. And uh, 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 Ingrid Bergman went back to Sweden, I think, where she was from and said goodbye to everybody she knew. And, and you know, it was her farewell tour. She got to have it. And I think there's some advantage to that, you know? My mom had a friend that did that and had a big party and a big dinner and everybody got together. She said it was, it was you know, kind of morbid but neat. Well, you know? it's not morbid, really. <laughs> not it, morbid, it, but I guess it was, you know, strange. It's a, ce yeah. a celebration what? of your passing, you know, or that yeah. you're going to be uh, She had passed it and said everything you know she accepted the fact that she was going and the whole bit and she said let's just get together and yeah you know right. say goodbye right exactly uh, that's she she right. Like, yeah. it'll be a celebration of your life almost true yeah yeah am i right or wrong yeah yeah so i mean you know what well, is a celebration of your life is to say hey thank you everybody for being part of my life yeah exactly you know 
Enjoy yourself. Back with us, by the way, the lovely and attractive Patrick Blazik, who has, uh, was away doing some studying the last couple of nights. So did you get it all done? No, it was just later. What, what was it exactly? Uh, it was for website design coding. Yeah. And what? And Another piece of the puzzle I need on my website. Yeah, but I mean, how much coding do you really have to do for a website? I mean, most websites today, the programs that are used to create them, are all kind of, uh, you know, what you see is what you get. WYSIWYG. And that's true. What I needed, though, because when I went to school, yeah. web design wasn't even, I mean, it was in an instant. I graduated college in 97. Yeah. And there was only one person Wait a minute. that was. Somebody, like somebody, don't make noise, please, because what it does is it, it it lowers his voice, and then we can't hear him. So whoever's making noise there, don't make it. Yes, go ahead. So anyway, uh, in the last you know 20-odd years, I haven't really done anything with websites because it hasn't been part of my job. Right. And now, as I've been looking for work, um just kind of guessing that because all the kids coming out of school are learning at least coding, that yeah. I should at least have the basics. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you're right. Everything's going to be wussy wig and, and and that that's the way it is. I mean, WordPress and all these other things. But yeah. I need to at least have a working um, uh, vocabulary. Exactly. So I that's what that was. That the companies now, like uh, like Google and so and, and Facebook, they will pay they they will pay to train you uh, f uh, to learn coding, and and they and they're looking to hire these people uh, in, in a big way. Right, but the thing is, Phil, um, I'm 42, and they're looking at 22 year olds. Yeah, coming out of they're looking at 25 year olds. Oh, no, uh, just tell them you're 22. They don't know. <laughs> yeah, well, right. <laughs> right. The thing is, I won't. I I can't settle for a salary of what a twenty-two-year-old would. You mean about eighty of, grand? What's that? About eighty grand. <laughs> hey, that would be fine. Yeah, I wasn't quite <laughs> thinking that much, but I mean, you know, it, it it's a realistic thing too. And if I was if I was in a company that would pay for me to do the schooling. I would, but the uh, the group that I'm with that doing the head hunting for me, they paid for the for the classes, so I didn't have to pay out of well, pocket. You know, but because you're, you're, you're handicapped, you might want to uh, look into seeing if please any of those companies Phil, have please a Phil, Please, please, Phil. He's handicapable. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not that politically correct, but you know, uh, you might want to see if uh, any of these companies will have a grant. Uh, that they will train you and hire you. Uh, you know, and just look into, you know. The, the huh? group that I'm going to is a, is a uh, state group, and uh -huh. they, that's exactly what they do. So uh -huh. the headhunter that I'm working with is specific to cripples, and um, what we're figuring out is my, my age is a big factor. And, of course, um, we figured, well, a little bit of schooling to get me at least vocabulary wise with web can't hurt. Yeah. Well, you see, here's, here's, here's what I don't get this whole this whole notion that you're 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 too old. I mean, if you're an it's artist, if you're an artist, you're an artist. I mean, I got this the other day. Uh, I see you, Jason. I'll go to you next. I I got this the other day. I was talking to Bobby Slayton. He says it's getting harder for him to find clubs to work in. Because the clubs are just hiring young kids to come in because the people who are coming into the clubs now are just young kids. And, uh, you know, you look at all the shows on, like, Netflix and stuff, all those comics are under 40. Bring you back know. the Borscht Belt. Well, I, you know, but, I mean, there's so, uh, but to me, age isn't a factor in being funny. Yeah, but yeah. Look, look at Rob. Rob, it didn't stop Rob from getting a good job in technology. You know, he he knew people, which helped him. 
but you know he uh, he didn't let it stop him. And uh, I was, uh, you know, I, I know Jason wants to say something, but I uh, there was a, a yeah, guy, Jason a friend of mine. Want to say something. He, yeah, he uh, was but, next. As a matter. Yeah. Of okay. Go ahead, Jason. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. All right, I was just gonna say, you know, a company's looking at Patrick's resume, and be like, man, look at this resume, it's great. And somebody steps up, and goes, hey, but you know, he's he's crippled. And then the well, other guy goes, like, fuck me, we don't care. We got ramps, we got elevators. He's over forty. Oh, fuck that. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, because. Um, the interviews that I've gotten have all been at places that are handicap accessible and have never really been an issue. Um, no, actually, it's good if they hire you because it makes them look good to the OEO. Yes, you know. yes. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm serious. Really? Yeah. Be, I didn't want If I was oh, wow. uh, black, gay, and crippled, I'd probably be a vice president. By now. <laughs> what a president! <laughs> well, I mean, but seriously, it, it there is. I mean, there is still equal opportunity out there where you do look at minorities and, and women, and you look at um, handicap. And I, it just in my field. I mean, it there's so many kids coming out, and it, it's a tough one to get into. And unfortunately, I was in it for 15 years, and my industry in the credit industry, it died. Oh, my so, my industry doesn't I, exist anymore. And if you heard you heard the latest, and and believe it or not, the NAB wrote a letter to the FCC encouraging this thing that they're going to do, in which they're going to do away with stations having to have a office and a studio in the market to who they play in See, other I words you, i'll get you a map of detroit you can study it up and you can do weather and traffic on the eights exactly exactly you know but what i'm saying is this means that your local station won't be local anymore it'll be run remotely from like new york it and really there, won't be, there, anyway. won't, there won't be an office there. Maybe they'll have a sales office so they can go out and sell time. And, and maybe they won't even do that. Maybe they'll just take national ads and leave it at that. But this means that, and the NAB is, wants this. Oh, this is going to be wonderful. The thing of the savings we're going to have, you know, to begin with, nobody asked you to buy 1,100 radio stations, okay? You know, nobody asked you to do that. Uh, and and now what's going to happen is the one thing about broadcast, about radio and television, is that they were local. Your local station was forced to be local, you know. And now it's not. Ninety percent of the shows are syndicated. Well, they, that's that's one of the problems that's, that's going there now, and that is a problem with my union. Uh, because my union should have been a little tougher about that and said, oh, well, if you're going to take a syndicated show, that's okay, but you've got to have a paid announcer sitting in the studio while it's on. You know, in my union... There are a lot them... of non-union stations, though. Well, no, a lot more non-union stations than there used to be. I mean, WOR, where I worked here in New York, is no longer union. Can you imagine that? Wow. You know, wow, can you imagine that? Yeah. New York station? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Uh, I, I was just going to mention about uh, uh, a book uh, called Man's Search for Meaning by Frankel. And I'm sure most of you have all read it. And, uh, you know, basically, if, if you want to do something, uh, no one can hold you back because uh, you're only being held back by, your, by yourself and your own mind and telling yourself that uh, f if I can't get a job at 40. Uh, it, it's it's uh, but you know, the fact I mean, is, Phil. You you know, age is a big problem today. Well, it might be a different job. You know, uh, I bet that, Patrick wishes he was right next to you so he could sock you. Yeah, or yeah, you, know, you got to do something on the phone. You know, uh, uh, you know, you're they, living. They what, what, dream, what dream world Move are you India living so you in, Phil? What no. dream world are you living in? I'm telling you right now. I mean. When I have somebody like Bobby Slayton saying to me, I'm getting too old to get the clubs to hire me, I'm going, this is one of the funniest human beings on the planet. I, I one know that. One of the most that, accomplished but, uh, comics in the world, and he can't get work because of his age. And then I hear about writers, in, comedy writers in Hollywood, 
who, if they hit 45, can't get a job. Because the networks say, oh, well, he's over 45. He can't write comedy. You mean to say people over 45 don't want to laugh? Years ago, there was a woman. No, they want to laugh. I'll, I'll, I'll go to you next, Patrick. But uh, I'm gonna, uh, you know, I see, I see you. Uh, I, uh, the years ago, there was a woman who hmm. wrote a series uh, and proposed it to the networks. And then she said that she was 18 years old or 17, something really young. When in fact she was over 30, but she looked it, okay? Yeah. And she went in there and sold herself, and they said, oh, the youngest writer ever and creator of a, uh, and I wish I, Felicity, I think maybe was the name of the show. And uh, she created it, and they started pushing her all over the place. Oh, the youngest person ever to write a series, and blah, blah, blah. The minute she found out she was 31, the show got canceled, and she was never able to work in this business again. She f defrauded the people. That's not defrauding. They should have never... But she e misrepresented herself. No, she didn't misrepresent herself, because you're not supposed to ask what age you are. That's being prejudiced. No, it's not only being prejudiced. It's, it's against, uh, uh, I think, uh, uh, the law. That's right. Uh, yeah. I, I think they can ask how old you are, because you need to make sure you're old enough, you're legal. Alex, well, uh, maybe, maybe in porn, you know, yeah. but uh, yeah, 18. Uh, Patrick wanted to say something yes, earlier. Patrick. I, I yeah, well, I mean, in, in that woman's case, age wouldn't matter anyway because there was the talent behind it. So even if she did misrepresent herself, and let's say that is some legal thing, she didn't misrepresent her talent. So That's right. she provided it once, again. And then as to going into a different type of job, that, that's a, a great idea. However, um, right now, I'm debt-free. And I've been debt-free for the last 10 years or so, except when I had my house, but I got my money back to my ex and all that. So anyway, so I'm debt-free. I, I am too, I just remembered. I'm, I'm debt-free. My wife isn't, but I am. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So, if I were to go back to school for another degree, I would have to go into debt for that and still not have a guarantee that I would have a job on the other end. And now I'm unemployed and I'm in debt forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars. That makes no sense to me. See if there's grants out there to, uh, for for you. That's me at sixty years old. Up and up. Uh, Phil, when I went to when I went to college the first time around, yeah, I went nearly debt free, or I I didn't I had I paid thousand dollars a year I believe it was because I got scholarships and I got grant uh, no grant it was all scholarship and um, it was great, but I was also eighteen writing essays to get these scholarships and then once you're in school you can get into these uh, uh, curated art shows and win money and all this, that's great. But I'm starting from scratch again, and I should be looking for a job full-time and be going to school. You know, it, it's a little more complicated than you think. And like Rob, Rob had the technical background already, and when he moved into a job, his new one, he built on that, but he already had the foundation. I, 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 think, and I think Rob also mentioned on another another occasion, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, Rob, that the people who were hiring you were older. Well, yeah, because the kind of job it is, you need to have, they do have a college program for it, that they hire people right out of college that they they've, that they've, given college credit to to work at the company while they were there so they could get up to speed on some of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But a lot of the work, you know, you you have to have some – you can't just take a guy who's got no experience and go and sit down and talk to these customers. You typically are more seasoned people, and that's older folks, right? Yeah. <laughs> but you're very, but they, you're very fortunate but to have found them. I'm extremely fortunate. Extremely yeah. fortunate. I, I, I mean, it's, I can't, I, I don't know what I did right, quite frankly. 
that it happened. You know, I must have done something right because usually those kind of breaks don't come my way. Because you're but, a very good person. Well, yeah, sure I am. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and, and it's sort of that marriage of some of the some of the um, the broadcasting and 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 speaking in front of people and knowing how to talk to people that helped along with the technology because you can be a real technology geek way more than me but if you can't talk to people you know right. just that the job just won't work out for you right I I, I, I hope my place burns down every day when I leave. <laughs> And that's your family's place. <laughs> yeah, well, it's insured. It's fine. It's insured. Yes, Jason. I, I, just because Tony spoke up and saying what his job, I, I had to let him know there is this hat company in Detroit. It's the oldest hat company. I think it's one of the oldest, longest-running businesses in the city of Detroit, and it's a hat store. And they're getting oh, run out of play. They're getting run out of uh, town because rents are getting too high. In Detroit? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, downtown's you know made a resurgence big time. Well, yeah, all I'm all I'm saying where my business is concerned, uh, the idea that a station doesn't have to have an office. That's I don't think that's actually going to happen. No, I think the, wait, the big wigs it's, it is, they will no, do it. It is going to happen. But there's it's, still plenty of small chain of stations out there that they'd want to keep doing their own thing, and they're going to stay local. Tell me a small chain of stations today. Oh, is that? You know, it starts with a B. Maybe some um, some weird ass B. thing out there, but uh, uh, you know, for the most part, most radio stations this company are owned. Correct me, Rob, if I'm wrong, by about four companies. You got <laughs> iHeart. You got uh, and two of them, what, by the way, are going bankrupt. Go ahead. Yeah, C CBS is now getting it bought by. Um, oh, Intercom. They're they're now part yeah, of the Intercom. company I work for in San Francisco. That was Live 105 in San Francisco was Intercom. Oh, is that right? So you got Intercom. You got you got uh, iHeart. Um, you got Cumulus. You got Cumulus. You got Citadel. Yeah. You, oh, there's, oh, there's oh, I know who else you got. Beasley Communications. Well, there's smaller Beasley, ones Beasley, like J-Core. Beasley and, Communications. And now the newest one is one of these companies is buying up all the Tribune stations. Yeah, the, one remember, of these uh, right-wing companies. Yes, it's a right-wing oh. company. And in fact, John Oliver mentions them on his show, does a great big piece on it because how how they 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 literally... Uh, write the scripts for all the news people across the country. Yeah. And, they, and, and they proved it by playing literally clips of the same story from any one of a number of stations, and it was the same identical script. Okay. That's, one I'm thing I think to, is I'm funny, to, we have one I'm, of our channels here, The Morning Guy, while he's doing his morning show, is also a news anchor on the local uh, news channel. So at the same time, he's doing his news on TV and on the radio. Uh, is, that's is, is, CNN, you know, uh, oh, between you. Uh, different guys and uh, Trump and going after the kid on Reddit that uh, supposedly did that uh, GIF. I thought Trump did. It's called pronounced GIF. GIF. Well, I, I put that on bread. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, am I good. right? Uh, let me see. He went to study all this. Patrick, am I right with GIF? Yeah. It's Peter. It's GIF. Because it's a graphic it's image. GIF. Yes, but it's pro everybody pronounces it's a it GIF. GIF. <laughs> I'm the youngest person here. I've never heard it called a GIF. I actually I heard somebody talking about it, a conversation about it because the first letter of the G is graphic, so it's a hard. By G. the it's way, it just reminded yeah, me. I everybody. just thought it was GIF. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, the GIF, uh, like for instance, on my um, Gabnet's page, that little thing like I have right now, the intersection is uh, the animation is is what's called a GIF or a GIF. It's a dot GIF. So. It's a, it was a graphic image uh, with a, a yeah. format yeah. So. file. And it's really about the only one out there for animation. Well, you can use Flash, I think. You know, you can do something with Flash. Flash doesn't work on all websites, though. I know. That's why I use GIFs. Flash is a really big uh, security hole. Yeah. Which is why a lot of companies are getting away from it and they're using HTML5. Yeah. Um, by the way, I just I just finished uh, uh, using a whole new form of uh, way to pu publish my Roku, but the only thing is it'll only do video; it won't do audio. 
So, but the, I found out my site is going, the, uh, the Gabnet site is going to be able to remain as it is because they are making an accommodation for that with a new program that it will convert to and you'll still get all the audio and everything else. But the other one I'm, I'm putting up is Gabnet TV so that as all our shows start getting on the Facebook Live and so on, I'll start putting the shows up there, you know. So. But my shows, the shows like this one tonight will wind up uh, on, uh, on uh, uh, wind up there. So, you know, that was the other recommendation I made when you first put the uh, live to the channel, the uh, Gabnet Live, up on Roku. Uh, I said, why don't you call it Gabnet TV? And it was too late. You know, it was too late. You no, called because it Gabnet because Live. most of it isn't TV. Well, Mo most, yeah, but it, you watch it on TV. No, you don't. We don't do any the, like the Ro Facebook Live. You can't see on there. You know. Oh yeah, but on a Roku, you you watch it on your TV. Well, no, you you're you're going to listen to it on your TV. I mean, we have the live audio and things like that going. You know? Yeah. So, let me yeah. see here. Here comes, uh, uh, yeah, Brian. Brian. Hello. Brian's in his car. I always love that. It always gives us a sense of that this is for real. You know. Yeah. But you got to have coffee with comedians. Yeah, we're, we're, we're one short of a full house, folks, if anybody wants to call. What would you say? Used to, you're not pushing the envelope like you were that one night? Uh, no, I mean, I'll push the envelope. And as many people who want to call, I'll, you know, I'll put on. You would have had a full house if Steve was uh, you know, still around. How, I, how, however, I did find, I did find, well, you know, you'd be asleep and passed out by now. But, uh, 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 I did find out that night, though, that when I had 13 people on, including myself, that it was getting a little unwieldy. Yeah, that was that was uh, too many conversations going on it, at the same time. Yeah. Uh, you really got to take charge. The, the toilet right? talk did it. Yeah, it, it, it. The toilet talk did it? Yeah. yeah. Well, what you was, just got to really take charge and just, you know, so nobody talks unless you tell them to. You yeah. Know? Yes, Jason. Uh, you can, you can and, mute people, too, can't okay? That no. toilet talk was really good conversation, and I wanted to butt in on it. I bought a toilet, and it's a one-piece toilet. So I it know, without, looks like your regular with, toilet with, with, with a tank with, and the bowl. No tank. But it's all one piece. Is there, it's not a separart tank from the bowl. It's oh, a lot easier. Is there, is there a tank in there? Yeah, yeah it's, a, oh, because it's a tank I, I've, and I, a bowl. I had a toilet in San Francisco, and my friend Shecky has one at his place. Uh that has no tank at all. It just, I don't know, it just flushed. That was all. You know. Come out from the wall? Was it, it a wall mount? It was a wall. Uh, well, it was hooked to the wall, yes. But yeah. uh, but all toilets are. No, uh, most of them cool. are hooked to the floor. Oh, oh, to the floor, right. You're right. Yeah, it did have the thing. And I love that toilet. I just thought the world of it. Now, that's all one, right? Yeah, you don't take, just one. In other words, one you don't put so down. The, easy to clean. You don't put down the, wash, the toilet. Does it the, wash your balls like grenades? <laughs> no, it doesn't wash your balls. <laughs> but it only uses like a, not even one point two gallons. And, and if, you, if you've all heard I Renee, love... we know she has balls to clean. You know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't ejaculate you the way that the, hers uh, gives her orgasms. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. yeah. I looked you know, at those seats. They were like nine hundred and eighty nine bucks. Yeah. yeah. Ouch. Yeah, and that doesn't include the toilet itself. That's I, just I, I went to a place. I had never seen something like this before. Uh, I was in Monaco at the Sportsman's Club, and I went to use the bathroom, and they had about 12 stalls in the men's area. And when you use the bathroom, you use the toilet, it cleaned itself. It actually uh, went through a procedure where uh, it sprayed down. It did all sorts of... It was amazing. These were Toto's, the same brand as Renee's. But... I had never seen anything you like know, that. You know, we always wind up a toilet Japan, talk, don't we? What's the toilet? Yeah. yeah. Hey, uh, mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, when I was in China, uh, uh, and this even goes on, I was in one of the most famous restaurants in Beijing for for, for Peking Duck. Takeout? No, not takeout. <laughs> Sit down. I would like to get a combination. But uh, you go into the bathroom. I had to use the bathroom. You go to the bathroom. And there's only one toilet with a, uh, literally, a, what we call an American toilet. Yeah. The rest of them were a hole in the ground you squatted over. And most yeah. people 
would go in and squat. Yeah. That's supposed to be healthier than a it's supposed toilet. To, it's supposed to be healthier than a toilet. Yes. Looks like a little yeah, built-in. Looks like a little built-in swimming pool. It, it, <laughs> it, no, there's actually two places where it you can put your feet. It, it yeah, actually. Yeah, the two little. But you know, I could pee in there. I'd go in and pee in there, but I couldn't take a dump in there. I, I just said yeah, it'd be impossible for me to squat. And yeah, I, you, gotta, you know, I, how do you do it when these people like businessmen and they're wearing suits yeah. and now they've got to go in there and squat over this toilet? I, I guess they manage it because I manage it when I sit on a toilet. And this, is a, this isn't that different from sitting on a toilet, except I think you're going to be a little bit lower. Yes. You do it very carefully. Yeah. That's yeah, a good point. Miss. That's a really good point. You're in your trousers and you got to drop them around your, you know, your knees and you're squatting over this pool, this little built-in swimming pool deal. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Call it drop and trow. Come on, that's hey, terrible. hey, if you And were, all the if, big office buildings have them. I was in Microsoft yeah. and they had them. Really? Yeah, really? I was in Microsoft in uh, in Singapore, and they have them. In Singapore, you gotta be careful okay. when you're on the first floor and somebody's on the fifth floor going to the bathroom no, at the same no, time. No, but it, 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 <laughs> it, it, can you imagine it, the sounds coming out of that? Believe bathroom? it or not, in, in, in like I mean, I stayed in an apartment in Beijing and I had regular toilet. But you go to a restaurant. This was like a, one of the most famous restaurants in in all of Beijing, and a fancy restaurant, and they squatted. Yes. Uh, 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 Patrick. I didn't see that. You had to get scared. Patrick. What's going on? I'm just curious what cripples do. It's, uh, you got to transfer out of your fucking wheelchair. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, no, actually, actually, in China, all the crippled people actually have a hole in the seat that they. Ah. It, Oh, just wheel know. over the thing. <laughs> you wheel over the thing and then you take a dump. You know. I was in Korea. And the thing I noticed about uh, Inchon and Seoul was that there were no uh, handicapped people there, and there were no provisions for handicap at all. Uh, well, mainly, every, there's a reason for that, Phil, because uh, who doesn't feel uncomfortable sure? around a handicapped person? Well, <laughs> I, at 6 in the morning, they were teeming with bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic and, and people scurrying from here to there, but there wasn't one handicapped person. There wasn't one facility to handle handicap. Uh, it was, uh, I, I, and there wasn't any graffiti either, but, you know, they probably kill everybody that does that. But, well, you know, I, I couldn't, you know. I, what I said, that's what I would do. I would round up all the handicapped people, put them in camps. Because that shit is contagious. It's they do. It it's just, yeah. I, I mean, know. if you somebody like me, you're going to end up crippled. Yeah. I'm putting me in camp. And, 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 you know, as you know, Patrick, <laughs> uh, you know, crippled people make us feel uncomfortable. So, I mean, you know? They well, that's why. Uh, God, God for fucking cock sucking bed, you feel uncomfortable about your own mortality. Oh, he's like, you you know, uh, about. Uh, 20 years ago, I, 15 years ago, I fell off a ladder. I love Brian. And, <laughs> anyway, and, go ahead. And, and I had to, you know, I was on crutches for about three months, and it was easier for me to be in a wheelchair sometimes because the crutches were very uncomfortable. And, uh, and so people, when you're, when you're like that, people look through you. They don't look at you. They look through you. They don't want to look at you. Uh, when uh, now, and I was just for three months. I can imagine if it's a permanent thing. Yeah. Uh, did you notice that, uh, uh, Patrick? That people don't look at you. Um, I get more if I if I was with my ex or if I'm with somebody. Yeah. It'll happen on occasion. However, my personality and I think my the aura that I give off when mm -hmm. I'm out in public mm -hmm. is I don't I probably people more uncomfortable around me uh, to just ignore me. Um, but I try, I mean, you know my personality here with humor and that, I try to put people at ease immediately. So when they meet me, or if, you know, if, if I'm somewhere and I can't read something on a shelf, mm -hmm. I'll go up to somebody and say something like, you know, hey, can you help a cripple out? You know, or something <laughs> just to break down. Yeah, well, you work with other uh, people that are crippled. You mentor uh, people that are in, you know, that have handicaps. Uh, are they they don't have your personality. What goes on with them? Um, well, unfortunately, some of them 
not a lot. I mean, it, it. some of them are pretty severe. I mean, the guy that I'm working with now has a brain injury, and uh, he's had that for, God, over 20 years or so, and he'll never be able to be on his own. So uh, when he's out in public and I'm with him, he's treated very well. Um, yeah. But, you know, if he was on his own, I don't know what would happen. So, yeah, and, and I mean, I've dealt with people in wheelchairs and – uh, one guy. He was a but do you find point. do you find that your job Watch, as being crippled? And I'm not saying that it's a job, but your job with people is to get them to uh, uh, feel comfortable and not feel uncomfortable. Uh, yeah, it, 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 to get them to be more social in in some cases. Mm -hmm. In other cases, it, to help them become independent. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I would just going to say is in the case of independence, there was a quadriplegic I was working with, and all he had use of was his fingers. And that was the first time I had ever really seen a use for an iPhone. And it convinced me to get one because he could do nothing on his own, but he could use the iPhone to touch that. So, anyway, he wanted to go to the mall for the first time on his own. And his parents entrusted me with him through this group that I'm with, mm -hmm. and they met us, we met at the mall, and we went to a store, and he wanted to buy Dad a, a shirt for his birthday. So I said, okay, that's great. I said, one, you got a mouth that works. You got a great personality. I said, go find somebody that works in the store, and bring them back to wherever it is you see the shirt, and they will help you. And he did that, and it was just I was showing him just little things that would help him, and sure as shit, I turned my back, and he's at the cash register, and he's paying for it. That wasn't even part of our plan yet. So he had gotten comfortable enough to do that, and I didn't have to see him ever again, because we had reached all the goals that he had set for himself at that point. So mm -hmm. there was somebody that had an agenda, and even though he was a quadriplegic, um, he was still able to do a number of things on his own. And that, I mean, that was a great achievement for him. And here I am in the mall, it, and it, I told it, it, it happened, it, and they're fucking blubbering and crying. It, so, it, let me ask you a question. When you meet up with a guy that is a quadriplegic, and I don't mean this is a joke, does it make you feel more fortunate about your plight? I always feel more fortunate about me. Even when I see an amputee or somebody walking that has uh, other issues, yeah. I mean, I, one of the funniest things that happens with me is I ride with my wheelchair next to me, broken down in the passenger seat, mm -hmm. and I'll be driving somewhere and I'll see somebody in a wheelchair, and I'll think to myself, that's got to be a pretty rough life being in a wheelchair. Because I forget that I'm a paraplegic. Because I'm out there driving and doing whatever, and then I see somebody in a chair, and it doesn't register. But right that's away. what I and think. I, that's what I think makes you so great. I mean, and so special, is because you are that way. That you you don't you you know when you used to call me at Sirius. You know, I, I, I found it hard to believe you were a paraplegic. I mean, your whole attitude wasn't, oh, poor me, you know. And I'm sure you meet up with a lot of those, and those are the ones you really got to work on, you yeah. know, and say, don't right. feel it's sorry for yourself. Stereotype. You know, the world is not going to stop for you. You, you got to keep going and make the world yours. Yes, Jason? Hey, I got to get up in six hours, so I just want to say bye. Oh, okay. Hey, Jason. I'll him. probably be calling in tomorrow. Good. As long as I wake up and I'm bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. It's great. As long as his <laughs> wife is out of town and you can play with the guys. Yeah. Yeah. All right. See you tomorrow. Okay. Bye-bye, Jason. See you later. Uh, you I, I wanted to uh, bring up something about, uh, you know, what's going on in the U.K. right now with that 11-month-old baby that the judges 
in, in government are saying that they can't take them to the states for private health care, even though they raised $1.7 million to pay for it. Uh, yeah, I heard this on a conservative radio station here in Pittsburgh, KDKA. Like yeah. I want to know what he's I want to know what he's not telling me. In other well, words, I want to see the liberal perspective. As well. Well, wait a minute. Well, wait, hold on a second. Hold on. Before you go here, on, here, here, tell here. me the story because I don't know the story. Go ahead, Brian. Tell him the story. No, you, you, you had that. Oh. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, what, what happens is uh, there's this 11-month-old child that uh, is on life support in the U.K. Yeah. And the government is saying that they won't allow the family to transport the baby wow. to the United States where they have some sort of uh, treatment that uh, that they think might might save the baby and the government wants to take the baby off of life support which will uh, cause the baby to die so uh, and um, I'm just asking because I didn't hear any conservative shows I didn't hear anything on it I just formed an opinion and said is this due to single-payer health care and that they will not uh, the government will not allow uh, the the parents to do what they want to do well, and leave the baby on life support while they transport it to the to the U.S. for treatment. I don't even think I don't think it has anything enough, to do. I don't think it has anything to do with single payer. Well, what, why is the government involved with uh, whether they stay on or they don't stay on? Well, the 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 question is: Are the parents going after something which is? kind of mythic in other words how realistic is this treatment it's it's probably not realistic at all you but know they probably they'd be better they'd be, they'd be, for, for, for good medicine for experimental medicine they do better by going to france as an example well it seems as though whatever treatment it is that they're looking for and it's a very rare disease that this 11 month old has uh they have a treatment for it in the states patrick Moses. well they, they, an alleged treatment we don't Legend. know. We don't know the ethic. They're not asking the government to pay for it. They raised 1.7 million privately. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, and Trump I, offered to send his plane there to pick the kid up. Who? I heard about that. Yeah, I heard about that. It was Charlie. Who? Was who Charlie offered the kid? Charlie who, the kid. Who? Over, uh, who offered the plane? Trump. Trump offered his plane to take him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's it. Turn a tragedy into publicity. Uh, yes, sure. yeah. uh, even the Pope uh, said that it was a, a good thing to do. Yeah. A, a, yeah. Any, anyway, uh, yes, yes, Patrick. Well, I mean, it would kind of be like the United States preventing David Hager from leaving to go back to the uh, to Czech Republic to get his treatment for cancer. I mean, it, it it seems a little off to me that if they privately raid the money, get their money. No matter if it's fairy dust or hocus pocus, it, it shouldn't matter to the government if it's their own private fund and yeah. they're doing it. I mean, it, there's no government responsibility to the baby. So what? Why? Why wouldn't they? Well, it, it doesn't make it doesn't make a lot of sense. But let me say, in the case of David Hajek, uh, 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 that. Um, he went where he went mainly because he was able to, since he was a citizen, and had, I think he had dual citizenship, of that country, and he could go there and get this uh, treatment, uh, which is available in the United States, because you've checked it out. The treatment is yeah. available in the United States, but why didn't he do it here? Probably because here it would have cost him a fortune. Yeah, his deductibles were too high. Yeah, yeah. But I've decided pretty ninety uh, percent. I've decided against that treatment only because uh, I can kill two birds with one stone. Get rid of the uh, uh, the prostate, and I won't have the BPH uh, issues anymore. Maybe I'll be able to sleep through the night. You know, I might have some other well, issues. Well, you could but sleep it, through the night right now if your doctor gave you the right medicine to take. Well, no, oh, I so have. So you're not going to have the uh, proton therapy then? Is it, am I understanding I'm, this correctly? You're not going to I'm, have it. I'm going to go to Stanford, and I'm going to talk to one more person who does the proton therapy before I totally nix it. Uh, but I, I, you know, but if they give me the proton therapy, I still got the enlarged prostate. Sure. And but the you know, enlarged I have prostate an, can be taken care of. Mine, I, I don't have to get up every night to pee because I take finasteride, and I also take uh, Cialis, a daily Cialis, and I, I'm fine. I pee like a racehorse. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, yeah. I mean, the thing is, your doctors just haven't put you on the medicine that does it. Well, I'm on the Cialis, but I didn't want to take the finasteride. I, I, I had bad reactions to it. Well, uh, it, it's I, not a great drug, but at my age, I don't give a shit. Yeah. You, know. <laughs> you know, I mean, so, so what? So what? You know, if, if if when you have an orgasm, all that comes out is dust. Well, and you, know. you get breastuses, yeah, you know. <laughs> well, I got, no, I no, I got no, I got rid of my breasts. You know how? I dieted, <laughs> Phil. Yeah, 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 yeah. How's that diet doing, by the way? Uh, I'm I'm down. I'm maintaining right now, and uh, I have started uh, Pilates reformer exercise. So I have a personal trainer. Mm -hmm. I've gone already three times in the last two weeks, uh -huh. and uh, th there's a machine called a reformer. It's like a bench. You lay down on it. There's very low impact, but you get an unbelievable workout from it. It's called the reformer. And you lie on this bench, and then they put this wet towel on your face and drop <laughs> the liquid into it. Yeah, and then they pour water. <laughs> yeah, they they yeah. pour water. Uh, I think they also call it the water board. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'll teach me. Yeah, okay. right. But anyway, so I uh, – uh, no, I mean, uh, like uh, – like, I, I was worried that my tingly feet had to do with diabetes, and I called my doctor a while back and said, do I have diabetes? And he looked at my, my work up on my blood and said, no, no way you've got the diabetes, you know. So I'm, I'm fine that way. But, uh, and also, it, a low-carb diet, you know, he'd really help you with the diabetes. Yeah. Well, I'm on a low-carb diet. Yeah. It's just yeah. you don't stick to it. See, now I can go off of it every now and then because I'm, you know, and I get on the scale every couple of days, and if I go up a little bit, then I go down, up a little bit, I just, you know, just hit yeah. it, you know. Uh, so uh, I don't know. What, so what I'm saying with the story with this kid, and I'm not that familiar with it, uh, yeah. I don't know why the government is taking the stance that they're taking and why they would have any control of what this parent does with their kid, except that maybe to transport him, he needs some kind of medical devices on the plane to take him there. But you say that medically that, that people have given enough money to him that he, they could probably buy the equipment themselves. Or rent it or and, rent and transport it, it. And transport him and so on. So I don't know why England is saying you can't take the kid. In fact, the but the, what the, concerned the parents, me, they can take the kid anywhere they want to. It was a panel of judges. So that made me ask you know, the question of myself, well, has this got something to do with single pay health care? And, no, it, no, you know, is no, this, no, you know, the, the kind of thing that we no, could expect? No, if, no, uh, no, no, it has nothing to do with single payer health care. I'm sure of that, uh, you know, because in England, you don't have to use national health, as they call it. You yeah. can have a private doctor and go to a private doctor. So well, you these have people, you have that you, you have, you have but the government you have the that. government won't let them do it. Well the government won't let them do it, but I'm I'm wondering why uh, and and what the reasoning is behind it. And I think the reasoning may have something to do, and this is just my my own personal theory. That the reason that it may exist uh, 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 is because the government is acting like uh, uh, this this government w would act, as an example, in, in certain cases, and saying that uh, it's, it's not good for the child, you know, and they stand That's exactly in the right. Huh? That's exactly what the article says. It says oh. last week a series of escalating legal appeals. The European Court of Human Rights ruled that the hospital can discontinue life support for the baby who has been in an intensive care since October. His desperate plight has come to the attention. We know that the, the domestic courts concluded that it would be lawful for the hospital to withdraw life-sustaining treatment because it was likely that Charlie would suffer significant harm if his present suffering was prolonged without any realistic prospect of improvement and the experimental therapy would be of no uh, effective benefit. Is that euthanasia? That's what they're saying. No, it's not euthanasia. Well, that's what it sounds like. Yeah. Well, it doesn't sound Those like euthanasia. Know. What it sounds to me is like, when do you pull the plug? You well, know? but the, that's always been a personal decision in this country, not one, not one that's legislated by some court. Right. 
and uh, you know it, it's saying that the doctors and the uh, and the courts have uh, rights over uh, the individual. The parents, you the know, parents. that doesn't seem right to me. No, yeah. uh, that's why I asked the question. You know, I. I, I thought maybe yeah, somebody I, else. Yeah, you know, I, I, it, 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 but I don't think it has to do, it does not like it has anything to do with single payer over there. Because you do, as I say, have the option to use your own doctor. So why wouldn't they let them? Well, well I think th it's just because they don't want to keep them on the life support. I, right. Look, I think these parents are stupid. Can I be, is, be very frank about it? I think they're stupid because the kid uh, is uh, a... Uh, uh, it, it has if, if it's since October and the kid is nine months old how long has he been on life support yeah, since he was yeah. about three months old yeah. uh, the chances are this kid is never going to make it okay I mean I I don't think that you're going to see this kid through all of this and then he's going to grow up and be a big healthy human being not no. true by now that it's brain damaged anyway he's yeah. brain damaged so uh, the the loving thing for the parents to do would be to pull the plug, okay? That would be the yeah. loving thing to do. And, you know, it's a little, little kid. Uh, you've got chances to have many more, you know. So uh, the question really is, what, you know, what, what are the parents maybe not being right about the kid in a way, you know? I don't know. The kid was really cute. I mean, you you looked at pictures of him and uh, little Charlie. He, he was just a doll. Just you know, doll. and he probably was. You know, but I mean, the 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 question still remains. Uh, I I think that what what's happening here is that the government just says, hey, you know, the I hospital can pull the plug because this kid is not viable. Okay, he's not going to be hand, able to survive. We had the Terry Shivo thing in Florida. Right. Yeah. And uh, there, they didn't let him pull the plug. Now, right. what happened with Terry Shivo? Did she start breathing on her own after they pulled the plug? No. She died? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, they, they, there was somebody that uh, they pulled the plug and they and they started breathing on their own. I can't remember who it was. Oh, you know, I mean, it... it, it and, and I, I'm fine with that. If you pull the plug and then the person keeps breathing and keeps going and then wakes up, fine. Coma. Yeah, but um, if this person's going to have to be on life support for the next 10 years, my question is, living. what are you being a selfish parent by saying, you know, I love this child, this, per, this kid enough that we should just let her go? I don't know yeah. their reasons for it. I don't know if it's religious or uh, something else, but... Uh, yes, uh, uh, Mike. If you pull the plug, you know, you're not making... You know, yeah, it's it's right, because the baby's not suffering anymore, period. Am I right or wrong? That's right. We don't to How can anybody really know? Yep. But... I do it with my dad, why? and you pull the plug, and you don't necessarily stop breathing right away. No, my dad don't. went seven or eight hours before he finally took his last breath. Same with my brother. Same way. Yeah. You but never know what's going to happen. You never know. But, but if, somebody, if somebody's in a constant vegetative coma, uh, I think that if you care about that person, you're going to put them out of their misery. Because they're not going to come around. If they're in a vegetative coma, even if they became semi-lucid they would never have the brain power and it, it would just be life would not be good you know like a friend of mine's brother he had a he suffered a stroke yeah so when they pulled the plug it's just well they, we can keep him on blah 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 but the one thing though she says is the heck with it you know he's going to be in a vegetarian state he's going to be unconscious you wouldn't recognize us just go ahead pull it yeah. Because it would be better for him in the long run. Yeah. But again, answering your other question, Phil, I don't think it has anything to do with uh, the single. evils the evils that are single payer. Uh, it, you know, I mean, they have, they have national health there. But if you don't want to use national health, you can always go to a private doctor. So they don't have that control over you that you I, and have. And I don't understand to, with this 1.7 million why they can't do that on their own. And I have no idea the, either. They, you know, but I, I it probably I would say from what you've told me, 
Yeah. Anything they want to do that way, way would be a complete waste of time. Well, that's what the government is saying. But yeah. uh, uh, I, I think, however, uh, and I get to you in a second, Patrick, that the parents, however, because it is their kid, have every right to try and get whatever treatment they think they can get. But I think they're living out a dream. I don't think they're living in any kind of reality. Yes, Patrick. To the point of, uh, I think it was brought up earlier, with having to have uh, certain medical equipment and that on the plane, I would think if they found a doctor or a team in the United States willing to do this, that they would be willing to go to the UK and then fly back with the child back to the United States so that no UK doctors would be involved in it and it would be no expense there um and the million dollar whatever it was that was raised seven would take care of seven million it, it would probably take that much to get them across my my wife works for one of those companies that does that yeah yeah that's exactly it. it's an air ambulance yeah it, it, it's got to be a lot of money especially if the kid expensive the right. mm. so, but nevertheless, if they've got the money to do it with, I mean, I think the British government is wrong in not letting them go and do it. Yeah. You know, that's uh, I, I, I think that's wrong. You're going to spend the money and do it. And you've decided to I, do that. Yeah. I think their reasoning is this is what's good for the child, you know, which so, is not what government's supposed to be doing. Rob looks like he's reading the article. Did you see anything else on it that. Uh... No, I did read the the whole article. I mean, it's just uh, the hospital has decided that they will allow the parents. They'll leave the child on the uh, life support to allow the chip, the parents to figure out how they do want to end it. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Because they feel close to the they feel close to the family. Obviously, they've been there for a long time. So the hospital has said, "We'll leave life support, give you a chance to figure out because they have permission to pull it." Hmm. From so, the it from sounds the like a pretty dire situation where the hospital knows what's going to happen, pretty much. Yeah, it sounds and, you know, that it, way. Obviously, it it's a parent, sounds wrong, though. It just doesn't it's, sound yeah, right. It's, it's a parent's yeah. emotional thing, but the parents should have the choice to do that. And right. if the, you know whatever happens, happens. Hey, right. now it's the result. About the plug, but we could have been talking about toilets all this time. Yeah, you know? but, but well, <laughs> you know, um, remote it, control. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, I, I wouldn't blame it on single payer, Phil. I don't think that that's, you know. No, I just was wondering so, why so, the courts would get involved. Well, because uh, question, the, the courts got involved, but but uh, sing, but the uh, health, national health did not get involved. And that's who would be involved if, if, if it were an the issue. The single payer thing. The single payer thing, yeah. Uh, national health, a very interesting thing. It's something Britain gave to themselves as a gift. Uh, after World War II, saying we should give ourselves something good, and they came up with this, and it, for years, has been pretty good standard well, they, of medicine. You know, after World War II, they were devastated. Uh, they had been bombed by the yes, Germans. Yes, and I'm saying uh, the reason the reason they did it. Yeah, was, was well, they, give... they maybe had to do it because the people were in such rough shape. No, 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 no. That was not the reason they did it. They did it because they said we, as a nation fought together we suffered together we owe something to each other and they gave themselves single-payer health care or what you call single-payer health care they call it national health and uh it's always been considered as a socialized medicine system one of the finest in the world yeah commie bastards yeah <laughs> socialists <laughs> yeah the commie bastards uh I'll tell you something. I mean, I, I, I have my ex-wife. Oh, look at the time already. I'm sorry. I won't even get into it. We'll talk about my ex-wife and how much it's probably costing her, which is probably a fortune, even though she she has. Uh, oh, hold on a second. I got to get rid of something here. Uh, oh, is that? Oh, there we go. Uh, there. I, I have to close a mute tab here. There we go. Then I can bring this up and then I can play the music. Okay. Hey, we ran out of time. We can pick up this conversation again tomorrow. Uh, 
and I want to thank everybody or who's joined. on the intersection, right? Huh? Or on the intersection. You can go to the intersection next if you want to, and uh, and let them uh, deal with it. Uh, but anyway, uh, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank Mike. I want to thank uh, uh, Tony. I want to thank uh, 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 <laughs> Kevin. I want to thank Brian who called. I want to thank Phil. I want to thank Rob. I want to thank uh, Jason. I want to thank Patrick. And I guess I should thank Steve as well, even though he wasn't <coughs> lucid enough to uh, participate. Uh, we'll see you all again, I guess, uh, tomorrow night, right? And uh, stay tuned. I'm going to take a shower now. <laughs> what is that? What they're going to do to the kid Phil in England? Phil flushed the toilet. Uh, <laughs> uh, anyway, to everybody <laughs> wave goodbye, okay? And thank yeah. you so much for joining us. Uh, the intersection is next over most of the same station, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and I would like you to all join uh, Jack and Amy uh, as they do their fine program. Uh, right after this one, okay? Uh, here, I got to do a couple of things. That's why you see me looking up at this uh, computer. I can't, I can't do it all right and have it look good. Anyway, I'm Alex Bennett. That's it for tonight. Uh, the uh, the uh, intersection is next, followed by connections at uh, one o'clock in the morning. I'm Alex Bennett, and as always, you know what? If you see her, you tell her I love her, okay? <laughs>